when is it a good time to buy a stock when is it a good time to sell a stock talking about it in this video so stay tuned what's going on guys so i want to make this little video talking about the idea of where do you want to buy where do you want to sell what's you know what's the real idea here because i see a lot of people asking this question they're like well how do i know when to buy how do i know when to sell there's no secret answer where i'm like hey the way that you want to buy the way that you want to sell is like this but really the one thing you need to do when you're day trading when you're trading in general maybe even investing you need to really ask yourself why am i going to buy at this point and then you need to think you know about the indicators what's lining up there what the bigger overall picture is and then think to yourself okay that's a good time to buy but you don't want to just buy 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 you know if i see a stock it's going up it's moving and all of a sudden i'm like oh i want to buy i'm gonna buy 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 i'm gonna jump in here but then i don't really think mentally i gotta think okay why am i buying here what's the real reason you know what's kind of going on and then what am i gonna Kind of where am I taking profit at? I need to have that plan before going into the trade. I need to be able to analyze that fast enough because when we do get these crazy moves, you know, I need to be able to look at them and be like, okay, it's this is game on, game on right here. I want to get in on this action. So you can see here, this is MYSZ uh, yesterday, the day before, making some big moves. And you can see, you know, we had some nice moves on this thing. We had some some pretty nice moves. And let's say, let's say I'm trying to buy, this is not the best chart really to explain this on, but let's say we'll just... Get an idea here so you can see myz yesterday morning had that pre-market resistance i talk about pre-market resistance a lot and the reason i talk about that is kind of it's like a a good area to watch so if pre-market this stock gets up to 260 but it can't break above 260 uh, that's like okay that's kind of resistance that's where we're having issues at and now if we sell off and then we bounce back after open then we're like okay okay we're getting above that 260 area so that means that there is there is some bullish sentiment. It means that there is some action. We know we're moving higher. And you can see yesterday, 261 was the pre-market high at open. It bounced around there. It jumped above 260 up there to $3. So then, again, we have that whole dollar. A whole dollar area is always kind of a good area to buy on the long side. So I want to think about this like this. If, you know, if this really jumps above $3, it gets strong, it jumps above $3, I'm going to expect some kind of move higher from there. And you can see over $3, it jumped up. On this first candle to 308 it pulled back but then we got that move up there to 360 so over that whole dollar area we started moving there got there to 360 again now on the short side now where do i want to sell at on this if this resistance there at the three dollar area it's not going above three dollars it's getting stuck that's an opportunity to go short so now i'm thinking about okay now i can sell if it can't break above three dollars and you can see kind of the sign kind of the same game plan here later on so it bounced off this 260 area, which was that previous resistance. That previous resistance turned into support, so it was bouncing there. You can see that would have been a good time to try to buy here for this bounce back above three dollars, but then couldn't get above three dollars. So if I'm buying here at 260 for a bounce back to three, it's not breaking above three. I'm selling because it's not breaking that three dollar resistance, and I'm worried that it might crash back down. And now if I'm trying to go short here trying to short this stock i'm looking at three dollar area like okay now we're having trouble there at three dollars it can't break above three dollars it's getting stuck there so i'm going to look to go short the same way that i'm looking to buy the balance off the support now i'm looking to go short there off that resistance so i need to always be going into like be going into that plan all right if i'm shorting here at three dollars where's my stop going to be you know my stops gonna be a little bit higher than i want to be so let's say i'm shorting here at 310 uh the stops there at the 330 area you can see you had that previous resistance at 325 330 area so i go into this knowing I'm risking 15, 20 cents. Same idea. So if I'm buying here at 260, where's my stop going to be? My stop's going to be down here in the 250s, 240 area. If this can't hold the support, I'm going to get out. So I need to go into every single trade having an idea of what my plan is, having an idea of what I'm going to do before I do it. Now, if I just start buying, if I just start jumping in, you know, see how there's this middle room here? See how we're 260, $3. There's a 40 cent gap there. Buying in between that gap is not a good idea for a couple of different reasons because because if I'm buying in between there, it doesn't really have a clear movement. So let's say, okay, I'm buying here. I'm Oh, I'm like, oh, it's moving higher. All right, I'm buying at 280 now. Well, now we have that $3 area. So I only have about $0.14 cent area to make profit. And then I'm thinking, you know, there's a support down here. So if this does start selling off, I got to hold support there. That's going to be my stop loss area. If it doesn't go up, I'm going to take profit. So I'm, you know, buying right in the middle of this dead man area. 
Dead Man's Land. We're going to call it Dead Man's Land. So in between that area, but in between that support, that resistance is, is a dangerous area to buy because this stock could go either way. It's a 50-50 at that point. Now, if we get to $3 and it's showing clear resistance there, it can't break above that. And now my odds are like 75, 25 that this thing's going to crash. So it's probably going to crash. I got a better chance to short it here at that resistance area. And that's what I'm looking for. I need to be thinking, what's my game plan? Going into every single trade with that game plan, kind of seeing the stock, seeing what the overall trend is, and then being able to be like, okay, if I get in here short at $3, I'm looking to take profit either at that bounce off the 260 area again for a support bounce, or if we break through 260. Uh, yesterday, STX was a good one for that. When I talked about this one yesterday, area here at the $48 area. So we had that whole dollar resistance. We weren't going higher there. We had this high on this candle. And my goal was to get back down to this $47 area. I'm looking at this to go short. I see that we're getting stuck there at the $48 area. We're not going higher. I see that there was this previous resistance here. I'm expecting that we might go back down and touch this support line or break below it. And you can see it actually did break below it. It broke below 47, came back up, couldn't get above 47, and then sold off the rest of the day. Beautiful little short here on STX yesterday. But I need to go into every single trade with that plan, with that idea of where is this going to go. I need to be able to look at the chart and automatically think, okay, we got this big move here, this big green candle. We got this resistance up here. We got this going on. This is looking like a good short. Now, just going into a trade, just going, oh, boom, I'm going to short this. It's not a good idea. You need to understand what you're getting yourself into with every single trade. So if you're going long, if you're going short, I need to have a plan ahead of time and not just jump in like a wild man, which there's those days where you get the FOMO. There's going to be days where stuff's just going crazy. You're going to jump in and you're going to make a loss or whatever. You make a win and you're going to get lucky. But on most days, you really need to think about quickly how to analyze what's going on with that stock, having a game plan ahead of time before going into that trade. And once you start doing that, you'll actually start trading less because now you're looking at the stock like, hey, there's not a good entry here. You know, it's kind of bouncing around. It's not really doing what I want it to do. It's not really going down. I really need to trade with the idea that I'm going to get into a stock. It's going to do what I want it to do. So I'm going to short it here at the $48 area, and I want it to go back down there to $47. That's my plan. That's what I wanted to do. I'm going to tell the stock what I want it to do and not just jump in here at the $47 area and be like, oh, well, maybe we'll see what happens here. Who knows? And, but I want to go into it with the idea of like, okay, I know there's a lot of resistance here. It's not going higher. We got the 9 EMA, the 20 EMA. What's going on with the bigger picture here on the chart? What's the trend here? Look how overextended this is. I need to be able to look at this. You need to be able to read what's going on on the chart and get a better idea of you know what the game plan is, what your plan is, and how are you going to attack this stock. And that's my plan right here. I want you guys to understand that I'm always looking for opportunity. But I'm also always looking for safe opportunity. I'm not just trying to jump in in the middle of this. You know, jumping in here, it's 50-50 because you don't know if stock's going to go up, if it's going to bounce, if it's going to go higher. What's it really going to do? Because there's not a clear indicator. Now, if I'm buying there at the $47 area, I'm looking for that move back up there to that $48 area. All right there, I have a plan. Same idea. If I'm trying to short, I'm like, okay, I'm going to short there at the $48 area. I'm looking for this move back to $47. Now, if I'm buying at $47.50, I'm like, uh, I'm going to buy at 47.50. Hopefully it goes back up. Maybe it goes back down. So right there, I'm like already having questions about my own trade. So if I'm questioning my own trade, questioning the own, questioning the outcome before I even go into it, that might be a red flag to know that, okay, this is probably not that good of a trade. If I go into trade, pretty much knowing where I want it to go, what's going to happen, that's a lot better trade. Obviously this could go higher. You know, I might get stopped out. But going into that trade with that plan, with an idea ahead of time, is the best way to trade. And hopefully you guys can apply that to your own trading. It'll really, really help you in the long term, just mentally, and it'll help your profit because you won't be just jumping into every single trade out there. You won't just see a stock moving and jumping into it. You really need to think about why are you jumping into that trade. So hopefully that helps you guys. It's helped me in the past really just saying, okay, Patrick, why do you want to jump into the stock? Why? You know, what's the real reason that you want to buy or sell this stock? Ask yourself that. Answer the question. If you feel good about it, jump into it. If you don't feel good about it, stay away. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, and I'll talk to you guys later on.